heard you question my stability. You think I'm fall just like a kid. Hello and welcome to All Things Lamb Suit Food. Today we're going to have an amazing time together as we beat face. In today's tutorial, I will show you how to achieve a yellow eye look. If you've watched my videos before, you know very well that on this channel we share the prices and the products that we use for the tutorial. In addition to that, we give details on the techniques that we are using. So this video is very, very informative. This is a beautiful look for summer and if you are interested in this type of content, sit back and watch. To start off this look, I will use Wet n Wild Rose in the Air Palette. From the palette, I will use shade number 2 for my transition color. This is a beautiful light brown color which will serve as transition for all the colors that I'm going to add on my eye look. To apply the transition shade, I will use a fluffy brush, a wide fluffy brush I'm using for the look. I got this one from Color. And uh, anyone who's interested in getting the brush, these brushes are available at Clicks. To apply the product, I use wiping motions. I place the product from the crease to just below the socket bone. And I blend the product until everything is seamlessly applied. To give depth to my transition color, I add another transition color. I will apply the color Rad from the Pinky Rose Obsessed color palette. To apply the color, I'll use another brush from Color. And this brush is less dense. However, it is still a fluffy brush. The reason why I used another fluffy brush is that I don't want uh, the colors to, to mix up on the brushes because I'll be using the other brush for, um, for, for blending out. I hope you note that the technique is still the same. We're using wiping motions from the outer V to the inner V and just below the socket bone. From the same palette, I will go ahead and dip into my cookie shade and I will use that for my crease space. This is a rich chocolate brownish color, which is a, a, warmer, a warmer shade than our transition color. For my crease colors, I always go for a color which is darker than the transition shade so that I have that gradual effect starting from light and moving on to a darker shade on my crease area. And the brush that I'm using here is a brush from uh, Real Techniques. It's an eyeshadow brush from Real Techniques. This brush is different from the one that I used earlier on. The brush has a tapered end. So after applying that crease color, I then grab the first brush I used for transition to blend out the harsh edges of my crease shade. So the major reason why I didn't want to mix up the brushes when I was uh, transitioning, it is that I knew that I will interchange these brushes when, up, when uh, blending out my shades. To further deepen my crease shade, I reach for my Wild Integrity palette from Makeup Revolution and I reach for the darker black or charcoal color. I don't know what color that is, but it looks charcoal to me. So help me in the comment section below what color that is. So I reach for the same brush, which has a tapered um, end. I love this brush because it goes into the crease. It has more precision and it gives the, the, the eye shade more uh, pigment uh, appearance than a fluffy brush would. 
I hope you noted that the technique was the was the same. So now I reach for the first transition brush and I blend out the harsh edges. The beauty of makeup is in the blending. I can't stress that enough. If you want your makeup to look beautiful, make sure that everything looks well blended. To avoid transferring my crease shade to my socket bone, I brush in a pattern that drags the product downwards. I hope you can note that. This technique is very important when you're trying to avoid a muddy eye. I then go on and drag my fluffy brush, and I use that one, to blend any harsh edges. For the blending, I'm still using the same pattern. I'm pulling the product towards my lower lid and I move back and forth in wiping motions. All right, moving along, I grab my Can A Dead Concealer in the color Chestnut and I use that for cutting my crease. To cut my crease this time around, I'll be using a concealer-shaped uh, brush it's a small brush that looks like the concealer brush the reason why i reached out for this brush it is because of the size and since the size is smaller it gives me more precision i got this brush from a set of small brushes which i got from a chinese shop <laughs> Oh yeah, I do buy some of my tools from Chinese brands, especially these small brushes. They have a fleet of them, so they really, really work well for me because I'm a beginner in makeup and um, reaching out for brushes from the bigger brands like MAC is a bit of a hassle at this stage. But then when I grow, I'll get there, honey. <laughs> if you are in Manzini, the shop is opposite uh, Nedbank. It's a cosmetic shop that is opposite Nedbank, the one that is close to uh, the bus rank. So what I do here, or what I'm doing here, is that I I carve out my my crease. I use the tip of the brush to create the the arc on my on my crease, and I hope you note that I slowly marked out that that curve and when that curve is finally defined i then drag the concealer on my on my lid space on application of the concealer on my lid space i make sure that i tap onto all the gaps on my lid space in preparation for my eye shade i have to make sure that there are no gaps because if there are gaps then when we apply the shade on top of the concealer it is going to be patchy that is why you see me going back and forth several times on um, this uh, stage or at the stage rather so you go on and tap 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 until there are no spaces so for my lid color I'll continue using the pinky rose palette and from it i'll reach for a very rich yellow color the color that i'm using is called stay golden it is a rich yellow color it has a bit of a shimmer this the shimmer is not very um prominent because of the color probably i don't know but it's not showing clearly on a uh, on camera so to apply this, I use a flat synthetic brush. So I dip into the color and then I bounce the product on the area where I carved out my, my crease. The reason why this brush is the bomb is that it has that curve at the, at the tip. So the curvature of the brush helps in reaching out all the edges of uh, the the crease demarcation here is a quick tip on uh, applying the eye shade on the crease what i recommend is that you should face down 
the whole time when you are applying the eye shade on your on your lid space if you are doing a cut crease the reason for suggesting that is that over time i've realized that when you look upwards it then distorts the the markings of the of the curvature so to ensure that the line stays curved you face down the whole time all right so now i go on and reach for my wet and wild palette and from this palette i will dip into the the transition color the one that i used at the beginning which is uh, number number two and using the transition brush i add or i apply the transition color on the outer v of my color to try and blend the the eyelid color and the the crease color so i repeat the same steps on the other eye what i normally do is that i brush inwards from the outer v towards the lid color this gives the color a good blend the next thing is to go for the crease color now the crease color i apply using the brush that i use to apply my my crease color which is the tapered brush from real techniques i follow the same motion i brush from the outer corner towards my my lid space this is a gradual process you you sweep towards the inside of your of your lid and you go back and forth with the blending you grab your transition brush and back at it i am blending using my transition my transition brush what i'm doing now is that i'm going back with my outer v color and i'm re-blending until everything is seamless so now i am applying the red color from uh, the pinky rose obsessed color palette and i'm applying that to the inner part of my of my eyelid the center of my eyelid and i hope you can tell that i am sweeping the color into my eyelid that this gives the gradual transition from the outer v you have that darker shade which is the cookie shade and it gradually fades into the lid space so now i will go ahead and deepen that outer v because mind you i was using the cookie color so now i am going for the wild integrity charcoal color for that richer depth on my outer v and i reach for my brush blend 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 and blend again all right so now that the blending is over now it's time to create a wing line for my wing line i'll use the wet and wild mega liner which is a liquid liner in the color black uh, i really like using this product because of the pigment most times the drugstore drugstore liners work for me i don't know maybe over time i will change to high-end products for my wing line i don't know but currently this product really does the job for me i really enjoy using this liner because of the way it glides on my skin uh i tried using another brand the the one that is a pen so the difficulty i had with that one was that it dried out so quick that the product had a patchy appearance at the end because it would dry before i finished drawing the wing line i don't know if that makes sense okay so what i'm doing here is that i use the tip of the of the of the wand the application wand and i draw a line as close to my lash line as i possibly as i possibly can there are different ways you can draw your wing line depending on your personal preference 
I usually don't go for a thick wing line. I just draw one which will make the whole look tie in nicely together. So what I do is that I apply from the inner corner of my eye all the way to, to the outer corner. And I don't make it super thick. In addition to that, I also don't make my line, my the tip of my wing line to be super long. I just keep it short and a mini wing line basically. That is what I am doing right here. <laughs> Let me tell you a short story. There's this other time when I was starting out to do makeup. I really struggled with creating my wing line such that it got to a point whereby I got to the wing line stage and the wing line was a mess. So what I did was that I got so angry and I went to the bathroom. I washed off my entire face because I was really, really struggling with creating the wing line. So as a beginner, the wing line can be quite tricky. If you're interested in knowing how to create a wing line, you can comment down below in the comment section and I'll make a video strictly for that so the next thing that i do is to apply my mascara i use the princess mascara from essence i get this one from from clicks i really really like it because of the of the applicator the applicator elongates my my lashes so this really works well for me so to tie to tie up the look I go ahead and apply my lashes and the lashes that I have right now are from a uh, punch bowl. So I apply though I applied those off camera. If you want me to show you how I apply my lashes, you can comment down in, in the comment section and I'll dedicate a video just for that. So what I'm doing here is that I'm applying the transition shade on my on my bottom lashes. This ties in everything together i then grab my mascara and i define my bottom my bottom lashes i really have small bottom lashes which are almost non-existent so i really have to do the step to define those bottom lashes i use the tip of the mascara wand and i gradually tease my bottom lashes on other occasions i don't apply um I, I don't apply a liner on my waterline because of the sensitivity of my eyes. So this was one of those days. So I then go ahead to finish off my face. I apply the Studio Fix uh, powder, which is NW45. I tap that on my skin. Now everything is beautiful and well blended. So this means we are reaching the end of our tutorial. Since this powder has a bit of a tint, I drag it down to my neck so that everything looks well blended. My neck and my face are the same color. So now we've reached the end of the tutorial, guys. I hope you like the final look. This is the final look. I went on to prepare my the rest of my face using the steps that I recommended on the basics of makeup, of flawless makeup. Uh, I have a video which shows the steps there i will link it so please go ahead and watch that one so that you achieve a similar face so we have reached the end of the tutorial please engage on my content guys i'd really appreciate that if you if you enjoyed this video please like it it really helps with the youtube algorithm in addition to that please subscribe it really would make a difference in my life as a whole. <laughs> I know this is dramatic, but it's true. Thank you for watching to this point. Have an amazing day and God bless you.